Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I'm up in my office in Marquette today and I just had a couple of minutes, so I thought I'd have a look on YouTube and see what was going on. Well, the Flat Earth community is in an absolute uproar over something they're calling a black swan. Now, I had no idea what they were talking about until I went and looked into it a little bit. And apparently, it's these platforms off the California coast. Now, I had already dealt with these um, months ago. As a matter of fact, if you look, you'll see that a shot of me dealing with them is in my theme song montage. So this is nothing new for me. I, I really don't understand what it is that they're all in an uproar about. So let's go ahead and have a look at it. So let's cue up the music and we'll get going. So we've got two oil platforms off of the California coast. Now, looking at this one on the right, I noticed that there is a walkway underneath it, and it's up on, up on legs, and then it's got, looks like a ramp or a crane coming off the side of it here, and it's extraordinarily distorted. It's a little bit blurry, and then we go over to this other one, and my goodness, look at this crane right here. That's freaking S-shaped. Now the first question that one has to ask themselves when they're evaluating a photograph for possible evidence is what are their confounding variables? Well, first of all, I would say that this crane over here is not built this way. Most cranes that I've ever seen are straight. So let's go see whether or not we can find another photograph of these same two oil rigs from approximately the same location on a day that doesn't have very much distortion and refraction in it. Now here's a shot from the same location of the same two oil rigs and there's a couple of things that you'll notice. First of all, look nice straight lines everywhere. These booms are straight, the legs are straight, got nice crisp edges on the platform itself. And on this platform, which is well over the horizon, Again, you see that side crane out there, and it's clearly straight. Now, if I were to look at these two photographs, I would say that the distortion is relatively minimal in this photograph compared to the other photograph. So how does that rate them as evidence? If you want to see the actual oil platforms, you probably want to go for the one that has the least amount of distortion, this one. The other photograph has got tremendous distortion in it. So let's go ahead and have a look at that one again. Have a look over here at this crane. You see how it's all distorted up here? Now we'll compare that to the non-distorted crane. Look at that, nice and straight. Now the other thing that's very interesting is you see the legs underneath the oil platform here? Where are they over here? Is this platform sinking? Or are we looking at something called refraction? My suspicion is, is that we're looking at something called refraction and specifically looming in this photograph right here because we're actually seeing more of this platform from the same location as we do in the undistorted view. Now, what would cause that? Well, atmospheric refraction. Now, let's go see another example of atmospheric refraction in action. Now this is a small YouTube creator that was an early inspiration to me, Dang Joes. He's only got 350 subscribers. I'm hoping Team Bob will go over there and maybe have a look at Dang Joe, hit that subscriber button and give him a little encouragement to make some more videos. But let's go down and look at the video in question. And here it is right here. The mistake of allowing red to be seen. So let's go ahead and have a look. So the first thing that you'll notice is that he has a little cylinder set up here. And on top, he has some green clay, then some red clay, and then some yellow clay. Now what he's going to do is he's going to set up what we call a geometric or a hard horizon. So he's going to get a butane bottle and he's going to set that clay cylinder behind it so just the green clay at the very top of the cylinder is peeking out over the horizon. And there's a little closer view. Now as you can see, the red clay is right at the horizon on that bottle. Now what he's going to do is he's going to set up a temperature inversion 
by dropping a little bit of liquid butane on top of the bottle. Now, again, we don't live in an atmosphere of butane. However, butane is very cold. It sets up a layer of very cold air right next to that bottle, which is only six or 10 feet away. And it can demonstrate atmospheric refraction in six feet that would normally take several miles of real air. And it's very analogous to what we're seeing in the photograph of that oil rig where you had all the distortions. The water temperature was 60 degrees. The air temperature was 63 degrees. There was a layer of cold air just above the surface of the ocean. The reason that there's a little bit of waviness in there is at the time, according to the original video, there was a 3.9 knot wind going over the ocean. That'll cause some shimmering and some moving distortion. But let's see what happens when he puts that butane on this cylinder. Well, looky there. You see how the red comes up over the top, the edge of the butane bottle? This is a phenomenon called looming. And it comes from the refraction of light as it goes through a layer of cold air just above the surface. Now, can we see this in real life? Of course we can. Let's go ahead and have a quick look. Now, of course, we're all very familiar with this photograph of the Chicago skyline from Warren Dunes. Chicago was 60 miles away. The photographer was on the top of Warren Dunes at 180 feet of elevation. And this is what he saw. Now, this was a spring day with very calm water, as you can see. Lake Michigan is quite cold in the spring but the air is starting to warm up. Perfect conditions for a looming effect due to refraction. And that's what we see right here. Exactly like that little clay cylinder behind the liquid natural gas bottle. Now, why does that occur? And what is the difference between an apparent horizon and a geometric horizon? Let's go ahead and go through that for a minute. Now, here's a photograph from the Lunar Command Module in lunar orbit on one of the Apollo missions. You can see the nice spherical Earth in the background, and you can see a very hard line at the horizon of the moon. This is called the geometric horizon, and the reason that we can see this as a geometric horizon is that there is no atmosphere causing refraction on the moon. This geometric horizon is what we use as the basis for the curve calculator. So let's go over to Walter Bisson's Advanced Earth Curve Calculator and see exactly what we're talking about. Now this is the illustration that I want to have a look at. This is, oh, about halfway down the page on the Advanced Earth Curve Calculator to show you how the curve calculator works. Let's have a look at this real quick. Now over here, we have an elevation at some distance above the Earth's surface where we are doing our observation from. If you draw a tangent line to the surface of the Earth towards an object over the horizon, that line will hit the Earth at one point, and then it'll cut the object in half into a hidden portion and a visible portion. That's all the Earth Curve Calculator does. It tells you what is visible and what's hidden. Notice that this is a straight line. It's a tangent line to a circle. And here's the curve of the Earth's surface. How is refraction different? Now this curved line right here has got what we call a radius of R, which happens to be the radius of the Earth. Refraction causes light to bend, kind of like this. Now notice that this line from O to G is that straight line that we just saw in Bislin's calculator. However, this solid line, which is curved, bends due to refraction. And as you can see, this is what we call the geometric horizon. And H over here, where that curved line intersects the surface, that's called the apparent horizon. Another term that you could use for this is G is the hard horizon because it's the geometric horizon. But because of a trick of light due to refraction, we actually see an apparent or a optical horizon beyond the hard horizon. You're actually looking over the curvature of the Earth a little bit. Now on Earth, we can't really see 
the geometric horizon because we're always looking through air. And even if refraction is very low, it's still there. Here's a good example of a, of a day that has very low refraction. And you can tell that it has low refraction by examining the photograph. Notice the very straight lines, very crisp edges to the platform, and very little distortion of this large crane. Compare this photograph to that one. Again, look at all the distortions that we're seeing. Another interesting thing that you'll notice too is underneath this oil platform, you see that there's a walkway. And that's the way these platforms are designed. This is the walkway that leads down to the dock. So when a boat comes up to dock for supplies, for example, the crew goes down a set of stairs right here and comes over here and, and that's where the boat dock is. This oil platform out here is designed in a similar fashion. And there should be a walkway right down here, which you see, I guess maybe the railing of it right at the horizon line where the water hits the pylons right here. But you notice that this oil platform not only is set a little deeper in the water, but it's a lot higher than it is in this photograph that doesn't have much refraction to it. If you take 100 photographs of these oil platforms, 99 of them look like this and one's all distorted, which one do you think is a little bit more accurate? Probably these undistorted ones. Notice how much lower this oil platform is than it is in that picture. Now again, we said that refraction was higher, which meant that the curve went further over the horizon. So as a result, you would see the horizon past this platform, and you would see much more of this oil platform than you normally would be able to see, just like you see more of Chicago on a day that's got a temperature inversion than on a day that does not, because even though the very tips of those buildings in Chicago would be visible from 180 feet, you generally don't see that much of them. That's why it was so special it made it to the news. Now, normally with a geometric horizon, you would be able to see objects between your observation point and the geometric horizon, which is marked as G here. This is the situation that you would see on the moon because there's no atmosphere. But if you do have an atmosphere, you're going to have some refraction. And that refraction is based along this curved line. And the radius of that curve, based on hundreds of thousands of measurements, is best estimated by 7 over 6 times r. So it's a little bit larger curve than the arc of the surface of the Earth at that point. So it, it's a little bit more of a gentler curve. And as a result, it goes around a little further. With refraction, you would be able to see objects beyond the geometric horizon all the way out to the apparent or optical horizon. Now, on days that you have very high refraction, the radius of this arc increases to beyond 7 over 6r. And as a result, that arc will actually come around further and you'll be able to see objects between the geometric horizon and where that arc hits the Earth. Now once again, that's the situation that we see here. We are seeing beyond the geometric horizon as would be expected, but we're seeing a little further beyond the geometric horizon that would be normal. As a result, we see more of the legs on both platforms and you see this huge amount of distortion, especially in this little area right here. That's probably the boundary of the cool air over the ocean with the warmer air above it. So here's where that temperature inversion is. And if you look at about that same height above the water, look, the distortion continues over here as well. And it's at about the same elevation above the horizon here. Well, guys, in case you think that this doesn't actually occur in the real world, you don't get the bending of light downward over water with a temperature inversion, let me show you this still from a video that D. Marble put out of one of his laser tests. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the laser beam. Tell me that's not bending downward, especially towards the end here. Now, if you were on the far end of this laser beam, 
and looking at it shine in your eyes, it would be coming down at you. As a result, the point source of the light would appear to be higher than the actual laser. Well guys, considering the Flat Earth community seems to be able to find the most obscure evidence of fisheye lenses on photographs, it's amazing that they can't see the refraction in those oil rig photos, or that they can't see the bending of D Marble's laser. It's amusing and a little sad in a way, but to Quantum Eraser and the rest of your little Flat Earth buddies, if this black swan somehow gives you a sense of belonging in a community and a sense of meaning in your otherwise mundane lives. More power to you, my friend. More power to you. Now, for the rest of us that live in the real world, the spherical globe Earth, now we understand a little better about the concept of a geometric horizon versus an apparent horizon. And remember, if you're looking out at the beach, and you see where the ocean meets the sky, that's the apparent horizon, because you're looking through an atmosphere, and there's refraction. Now, if you want to see a geometric horizon, join NASA, become an astronaut, and go to the moon. They'll be all around you there. So, signing out from the road in a snowy and very cold Marquette, Michigan, this is Bob the Science Guy. Make sure you hit that little like and subscribe button down there in the corner, and ring the bell icon. Share this around on social media. Show it at your next family reunion. Continue your efforts to help the channel grow. Take care, guys.